Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, we're gonna do an examination of the Striker Stretcher part that I 3D scanned and modeled and had sent out to be 3D printed. We're gonna check them out. Let's see what we got. I got everything here, finally, in one spot. Let's get right to it. All right, guys, so let's see. Right here is the part. This is the original striker part, which was so kindly donated to me uh, for this exact purpose, the 3D model, the plastic cam, which is the part that often goes bad. So uh, that's what I did, and that's why it's got this little bit of this powder on there is because 3D scanners, they like to have something, a surface where light reflects off perfectly back without being absorbed and white, you know, it, it reflects everything and black absorbs everything. So white is not so good. Chrome is not so good. So what it is, is I, I actually have a product that you guys might be familiar with. And this is a typical foot powder. It's spray on. And when you spray it on, what it does, it leaves a uniform coat on the outside, which allows the 3D scanner to pick it up so perfectly. That's what I did on this guy. And it's got a little bit of residue on there. That's all right, it comes right off. But uh, this is the original part. And you can see that what I did is I put a little zip tie around it because that adds some tension, which allows me to adjust this guy where it's going to sit while I rotate it, right? Give me the best angle of approach for the 3D scanner. So that is the original. Here is some parts that were so awesomely printed off for me. Oh, look at this. <laughs> That's so cool. All right. All right. So here we go. Uh, Inland Biomedical Services. How cool is that? Look at that sticker. You know something? These stickers are gonna go down here on my cabinet. Um, he's gave me a reflective sticker and a non-reflective sticker. Look at that, Inland Biomedical Services. Thank you guys so much for printing those off for me. That means a lot. That is such a cool sticker. That is going down here on my cabinet. Well, I can tell already that the scale is different, uh, which that's okay. I, I mean, is is not preferable, but uh, you know, that is something that's easy to scale down. Because once we have the 3D CAD, now we can do something about it. So uh, we have a couple different materials here. And just judging from the feel, they're both extremely rigid. That means that they're also very difficult to print because they have to be printed at a higher temperature. Uh, except these were not printed as you would think with a filament. These are probably SLA printed. Uh, that is when you have light that shines up and every place that the light hits actually uh, solidifies. And then um, what you have is an LCD panel and the light shines up through the LCD panel and it darkens out all the areas that you don't want to hit. And every area you do want to become firm, uh, layer by layer, they called slices. Uh, it illuminates everything else and it just darken, it darkens out the area here and are all surrounding it. So, and it allows the light to pass through and the light will pass through and it activates the layer and then it lifts up and that comes back down and then it does the next layer and then it comes up and then down. So it takes a while, but the resolution is insane. And what I'm looking for right here is something called striations, which are, striations are little, little uh, lines that indicate the layers of the slices. And you know something? I'm not really seeing them. And what's really cool about that is with this being SLA printed, uh, that means, um, actually, SLA, yeah, don't worry about it. It's resin printed, how about that? Who cares? Um, it's resin printed, so it's, it's, a, it's a UV light activated gel. And um, I cannot find any striations, which is really important because this area right here is where the cam is gonna sit, it's the locking cam. And it's going to go back and forth. And I believe this right here is where it usually breaks. So you can see right here that I've got a rivet that goes through. So in order to rebuild these, what I would need is the original part like this, even though it's broke, from the customer. And then I can replace this rivet right here. And you can see this is the orientation. So the scale is... Let's say it's about 5% off, you know, uh, so if I, I do a, a direct overlay, you see that it's just a little bit off, 
But as far as like the angle of approach and everything, that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. The little notch that I was worried about, there's a little hold off notches right here and uh, up here. And the fact that those are smooth, it's pretty nice. So um, I'm not really sure what material this was printed off of, but I'll tell you what, it feels fantastic. And it, oh my God, that is so strong. Let's try this one. See if I get, yeah, no, that's not gonna happen. No, it's, it's very strong. Um, and this original one right here, let's see, this one's not glass reinforced. I feel like this one's nylon, and I can't really read the markings. I've got marks on it from injection molding. So it, with injection moldings, my family uh, has an uh, injection molding factory, a plastics factory, and you know I, I grew up working there and you know helping out and stuff, and I was always around plastic parts, and I can always detect when there's injection molded parts because there's little pins that come and kick it out of the mold. And you can definitely see the ejection pin marks here, 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 and here to kick it out of the mold. And then the next one comes in. It feels like nylon. Feels like nylon, uh, which is a very durable material. But nylon does wear and tear. So uh, I'm kind of curious what these materials are. It almost feels like carbon fiber. It feels really dense and really strong like carbon fiber slightly abrasive compared to the the natural lubricity of nylon but it's also going to be stronger so there's that um the pinholes look beautiful uh, the guy that did my model for me just did a fantastic job so with just a little bit of cleanup this cam gear looks like it would be perfect in fact it might actually be usable even at the five percent that's my estimate five percent uh off scale so, hmm, interesting. <laughs> Guys, this is such a good part. And I've checked almost all the dimensions and they look like they're pretty much right. So the only thing that I gotta worry about is this, this um, rivet right here, which I have a solution for that already. But anyway, um, guys, Inland Biomedical Services out there in California, thank you so much for helping out. And um, I'm going to check 3D model and see what's going on and see if they really, if maybe it's just a model because uh, I sent a 3D scan and, you know, some measurements on photos over to uh, the Middle East. And I've got some contractors over there that do a lot of my work for me. And they're just, they're too good at what they do, you know. So why, why would I invest hours trying to do this when I can just, you know, give them 40 bucks and say, here, can you model this for me? And uh, they did a fantastic job. Like all the, the strengthening components, it's all there. Looks really good. So anyway, guys, that is my uh, community project. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave the finished model eventually in this video description. Um, so we'll see when this video goes live. But I'm going to do some more measurements. And I'm going to check the 3D model and make sure it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And if it is a one to one ratio, then that means that the 3D print was off by 5%. That's a calibration error. But I don't really think that it's the 3D printer because all the holes are spot on for spec. I think it's just the, the 3D model was scaled just a little bit too big. That's okay. They did a fantastic job and it's super easy to scale. So um, guys, how, how about that? How cool is that? We have a community project. So I had this component here shipped in from uh, New England, and I had these shipped in from California as a proof of concept. And now, when I get the finished code in this video description, I'm gonna leave the address where you can download the code if you would like to rebuild these striker stretcher uh, cam parts. You know, how cool. Anyway guys, thanks for watching this video. Hope you liked it. Um, that just goes to show that we as a community can come together and we can solve problems. All right, so this is going to be open source. I am going to post this up so that anybody can download it. Good luck, guys, and uh, let me know what you think.